It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the Seattle Kraken's graphic designer, Carly Sonardo. How are you doing today? Good, good. Uh, I just to do a little correction. It's Sarno, but you know, <laughs> it's fine. Um, but I'm doing great. Uh, beautiful day. I'm here in sunny California, so I'm not quite up in Seattle yet, but I'll be making the move up in uh, the summer. That's amazing. How did you know that you wanted to work in professional sports as a graphic designer? Yeah, that's a, it's a good question to ask. I feel like I, I don't give the typical answer because I, I never wanted to work in sports. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> it's something that uh, just landed in my lap and I was just like, oh, like, I, I guess I'll do this. But um, the first job I ever got like straight out of school, I quit within three days because it was that horrible of a place that I didn't want to work at. I was like, I'm, I'm never going to grow. I'm never going to learn here. And I just took it because, you know, you're like, oh, like a salary job, like that sounds great. Even though it was really like bad pay. I was like, I don't care. Like I'll do anything to like stay in LA. Um, but yeah, I quit after three days and my mom, she's actually the one that sent me, you know, the Chargers internship application. She's like, just, just try it. Just do it. I was like, I don't know. Like I don't really know I want to work in sports like that doesn't seem like that's me like I I grew up my life playing sports but I never like thought about working in sports it's just one of those fields I was like you know I'd rather just watch it on tv from a distance instead of like being in it um but to my surprise like the chargers they they hit me up and like as soon as they were like yeah we want to interview you I walked into my manager's office and I was like I quit (laughs) anything is better than this uh, and a month later, I was working for the Chargers, and it turned out to be like one of the greatest experiences of my life and really turned me around. I was like, yeah, I can see myself doing sports. Like everything that went in behind the scenes that I didn't know about is what I was instantly drawn to. So the fact that, you know, this was a sports team didn't even enter my mind because it's like you're working for the brand and you're making these products for the fans and you're growing this organization from the ground up still essentially. And so for me, that was a really exciting because I love branding. So to be able to do branding, but in a different realm and like in the realm of sports design, I was like, this is a super cool opportunity. And like, I've always loved working behind the scenes. Like before this, I was a music photographer and I interned at a, a record label. So like, I always loved seeing like everything that happens, you know, off camera, off stage. Um, for me, like that's the best part of the job, like getting to go in every day and like, work on something for months at a time and be like, yo, the fans are going to be so stoked when this comes out and finally drops. Um, so that's really like why stay in sports is because honestly, like I just love making dope shit and sports is just like perfect for that. So I don't know if I'll be leaving anytime soon. <laughs> I'm in it. I'm in it now for the long haul. Uh, eventually one day I'll go back to like branding, you know, doing like my own like agency and freelance stuff like I was before. Um, but for now, like I, I truly fell in love with sports just because of that one internship, like changed my whole mind around. What was your time like with the Los, Los Angeles Chargers as an intern? It was great. Like uh, I went in not expecting to do much. Like I feel like most design interns, like we're giving a lot of like busy work and you don't give, you know, if you're with a really good uh, like internship, their designers will take you under the ring and teach you from the ground up. And that's what happened at the Chargers. And it was not what I was expecting to happen at all. You know, like I was expecting like, oh, like we're going to give you like all the easy stuff to do that we don't want to do. But essentially like I was working on like really big like projects. I was branding signs and logos for the stadium. I was doing merch designs and like that intern class that I was with, like we just totally like dominated and took over the organization and like our superiors put full trust and faith in us to like do the job. They're like, you know, you're not just an intern here, but you're an employee. And it felt like that. There was never that division, like, oh, you're below me. Like you do what I say. It was kind of more like the interns were on like an equal level with, you know, all the senior employers. 
which is really yeah. something that's cool and special, like to be a part of that and be treated as an equal and be like, no, your work has just as much value as mine. And for them to trust us and kind of like make the brand what the Chargers is today, which is this really fun social team. And to be a part of that from the start was something that's really cool. And I love seeing the Chargers social account. Like I'm such a big fan of what they do now because like they just have fun with their brand. And to know that it was my intern class that kind of went in there and planted the seeds for that. And like, was like, yo, we got to connect with LA on like, you know, the fun, young, hip vibe level. Um, and then for them to respond and be like, yeah, let's do it. Cause it's going to work. Like that's, that was awesome. That was great. Um, so it was really because of them that I stuck in sports and like kind of take that energy with me to every place that I now work for. What did, what was it like creating t-shirts with the merchandise? Oh man, it's, it's a fun pro- process. Like, you know, like I gotten to do that everywhere I go. And um, I started off as, you know, being like a screen printer. So like I had a deep understanding of like t-shirt designs and merch designs and things like that. Um, and so to be able to like work with, you know, other designers on like my team and be like pull together, be like, okay, like I don't want to do something that Fanatics or 47 is doing. Like I want to create something that's totally unique to our brand and like really speaks to us, like stuff that we would wear because I feel like a lot of time, you know, we see the sportswear and sometimes it's a little bit tacky, I'm not trying to hate on these companies out there, but sometimes it just doesn't resonate with like us as employees or us as fans. We seem, and so it's like, no, we can do something that's a little bit more hip and like vibes with our fan base. And so that's really what was the intention is to make something that was a little bit more modern and a little bit more, you know, LA street in a way. Um, so to do those designs and for someone to sign off and be like, yeah, this is good. And then, you know, the next month see that bolt up go on a hat or a t-shirt. Um, that was really cool. So like I, I worked with another intern and he was like a phenomenal, like, hand drawer and so he would just do these hand drawn types and I would take that and apply it and like make sticker designs out of it and hat designs out of it so it was really more like a collaborative setting and I really love that type of collaboration when you get to work with someone and and see like your guys it's like baby come to life essentially. What was the, the transition like from going from an intern to now working as a graphic designer for the 49ers? Yeah, it wasn't that big of like a transition personally, because it's like I had already as an intern in the NFL, you're expected to work the same hours, put in the same amount of work as, you know, full time employees. You're expected to go to all the games, all the training camps and practices and things like that. So it was like I was an intern working full time employee hours, basically with the Chargers. So when I went over to the 49ers, it was really no different for me. So it was like I like I jumped right in right away. I was like, I've been doing this for the past year now. It's like, I, I got this and I hit the ground running. And, um, you know, the 49ers, their, their design team is phenomenal and amazing. And so, like I said, there's always those, those first like couple months when you're at an organization where you have to transition to like kind of learn their ways and stuff. And I really had to get over that learning curve. It's like, okay, like how do we save files? Like, what is, how does everyone like to operate and talk about their projects? Like, oh, like I I don't need to run certain stuff by you, or do I need to run this by you? Um, So there was a little bit of a learning curve, but once I got that, like as a team, like we flow together so efficiently and we would just click and vibe. It'd be like, all right, like I can't get to this project. Do you got my back? You'd be like, yeah, I got you. Like, you don't have time to do that. I have time to do that. You can't make it to that game. Like I'll fill in for you for that game. Um, So like in that sense, like that teamwork and that family bond with the 49ers was uh, made that transition like a lot easier for me. Um, And I I loved it. And like, I wish I could have stayed with them to this day. Um, But like new opportunities come and and this is in sports where, you know, everyone's leaving to to try and better, like uh, do the next best thing in their career. Um, But I have nothing but good things to say about that team and organization. What was a typical game day like as a graphic designer in the NFL? It's busy. (laughs) It's busy. Uh, You know, we essentially, we come in the same time the players come in in the morning. So it's like we're there three hours before that game starts and we're there three hours after that game ends. So like it can be a long day depending on what time you're coming in, right? Like those night games that start at like 5 p.m., like you're not leaving going home until at least midnight, you know? Um, but it's part of the job and it's like part of the job is experiencing and being there in the press box and like 
you are watching the game and you are like pumped and excited for your team when they make that touchdown or they get that interception pass or, you know, they recover the fumble or a big sack happens. Right. And you get excited, uh, but you have to contain that excitement to yourself. You, you're not allowed to show emotion in the press box. Really. You have to kind of be like this ice sculpture at all times, just working. Um, and that's the thing is like, we are truly multitasking. And when you're doing graphics live, there's so much like communication that's going on. You have photographers on the field, transmitting stuff to you. People, our social team that goes to the designers. Designers take those photos. We edit them in real time. We're editing graphics in real time. And we're trying to put stuff out as fast as possible. And on top of that, you're watching the game to see what's the next big play going to be. And once you do see it, you go onto your computer for photo shelter, grab that photo and send it out to social. Like you learn to like predict the things that are about to happen. Um, and so like when you're a new designer coming in, like that's like super like stressful and overwhelming. You're like, what is going on? Um, and it was a learning term but for me as an intern I was like I don't know what's happening I just have to do it like I was so scared my first game day because I was like what if I mess up if I mess up it's going to ruin the flow of everything uh, but that's why like you have like your team there to support you so it's like if you miss something and you couldn't get to something like they're right there next to you to pick up the slack and like send it off you know and, and that just comes down to teamwork and communication so game day is always stressful always fun um, if you're losing, then obviously it's going to suck a lot more <laughs> when you're at a game if you're losing versus if you're winning, right? And winning and losing really does depend on the type of content that you put out at the end of the day. So say if you lose a game, like you don't want to put up like a celebratory graphic or something like that being like, good game, you know, like no one's in the mood to see that. Like as a player, you're just like, nah, I don't really want to see that on my social feed. But if you win, you, of course you want to see this big celebration graphic of your teammates and stuff and that gets people hyped up so like depending on if you win or lose that's going to depend how much longer you're staying in that press box working for right what was the transition like from going from the nfl to the nhl it's different um it's a lot different uh I am still super new to this, the cracking team, but um, I'm really excited to see how it's going to be. And obviously the biggest difference for me is that our seasons are completely different from the NFL season. So NFL has 17, I guess now 18 games or something like that. Right. And the NHL has like 60 to 80 games. So it's like, I have no clue what's in store. Like my mental capacity for like working all of these games, like, I really don't know what's going to happen. And I just have to wait until I can get in there for like, you know, the real like gritty, dirty stuff to come to my forefront and like work on it. Right. Um, as of right now, like I'm just working on projects that I truly do enjoy and that I think the fans are going to enjoy. Uh, I can't really drop any hints or anything because it's all like super top secret. Uh, but I think what's in store for when our season finally, you know, when that draft comes and when that first puck drop comes fans are going to be really excited what this team is doing and um that's the part that I'm excited for the most so the games aside it's still working in sports it's still getting down to the grind of things and making sure that we're putting out content that the fans like and they respond well to um, so not much has changed in that respect can you talk about of course the process of transitioning from a completely new team to a team that was already established and had fans and had that fan interaction yeah so like the the 49ers right they are essentially a, a legacy team so and what that means is that they've been around for a very very long time since so like you know the beginning of football itself like 1946 right that's when they were formed and so they establish this name for themselves in a community in the bay area they they've never left they've always been there and these fans literally are like coming out of like the 60s still to these games and i've seen a fan who's like a hundred and like nine years old still going to games you know and it's crazy and she's just like yeah like i remember my first game i'm like wow that's wild so to see like fans that are so faithful and that is why they are called the faithful right um, it's because like they are diehard fans of this team and they win or lose, like they stand by them. And so when you come into the, a type of organization like that, there's a certain level of respect and finesse that you have to have when you're working with them. 
So everything has to be perfect. Those graphics have to be perfect. Everything has to align, not to just who we are now as a team, but who we were in the past. And you have to find a way to blend those two things together to make sure you're being respectful, but also appealing to the next generation of fans that are coming up, right? And so switching from that to you know, the Seattle Kraken, where essentially it's a brand new team, um, I don't know if we have a lot of fans. I'm told that we do and that, you know, Washington in general is very excited to have a hockey team. And that makes me very excited because it seems like, you know, a lot of people have been waiting, especially in Seattle, for this to happen for a very long time. And so the, our goal now is to kind of grab the fans from other hockey markets and bring them into our market. And so that's what this first year is going to be about. It's going to be about establishing this team um, and making a community impact, because if you can have those two things, then you can have, you know, fan, a, a great fan following coming after you next, right? Um, if you're just a team that just doesn't really care about your fans and doesn't want to appeal and only cares about winning, then I, I would say it's probably not going to go so well, but that is not the Seattle Kraken. We're very much community forward facing and wanting to make an impact and a difference. And I think that's a great start for any team to have, especially starting out in this league. Uh, and so I'm super excited to see how it's going to grow and evolve. And I think they're only going to get bigger as time goes on. Like you look at the Las Vegas Knights, right? Super small when they started out. And now the entire city of Vegas is behind them. And even then, like I can go anywhere in this country and see people wearing Vegas Knights stuff. It's crazy. Um, even when I was in Seattle, I saw people wearing Vegas Knights stuff. So like, if that's a that stands to the testament of time. Like, it's just going to take a few years for us to really truly build up our fan base. And like, if our team is really good and hopefully they are, then it's like, we're going to grab those fans immediately because people do love to follow a team that wins. How did you get your ideas for the kind of content that you post on social media for teams? Um, yeah, that's a good question. So when it comes to like content creation, I'm, constantly looking at what other teams are putting out and not just what other teams are doing but um I'm a big music fan so I'll, a lot of my ideas I grab from like music in general album covers vinyl covers uh I have ton collection of like design books that I flip through I have ton of like skate magazines that I flip through um and so like I just for me it's like grabbing those layouts and incorporating them into a way my design that's going to work and then making it sports centric um, so like, I, it's not just like one thing I'm pulling for that inspires me. I'm, I'm just literally inspired by like life and things I see in general. Like I could see a, like a, an alcohol, like bottle, like label and be like, oh, that's really cool. I like the typography on that. So I'm going to try that in like a graphic for wallpaper Wednesday. If it works, it works. Uh, and really that's what wallpaper Wednesday is for, you know, in the sports world is for trying out those crazy, like weird graphics that we couldn't normally put out during the week because they don't exactly follow brand guidelines. So any chance for me to explore and push the boundaries with my graphics, I'm going to take it. And so for me, it's really those outside influence that I had growing up that really made me fall in love with art that I still keep close to me today when I'm working in sports. What are some of the teams that influence you in your style, such as, for example, with you being in the NHL, do you get inspiration from the Carolina Hurricanes and the Nashville Predators? Yeah, so I would say for me, one of the like the, the bigger teams that I follow for in the NHL that are inspiring me is the San Jose Sharks. I really like the style that they have gone and their campaign that they have this year is phenomenal. Uh, basically because it feels like it's a lot of analog stuff mixed with a lot of retro and like for me that is what I love like that's my bread and butter for design um, if I could design like that every day I would uh, but outside of that you know like I really haven't been able to follow all hockey teams because all the teams I've followed for the past like three and a half years has been football right so if we're talking football like love what the Chargers still do to this day. The Panthers, I love their graphics. They're super clean and super innovative. Uh, I also really do love the Bucks. The Bucks design team, just, they have just amazing talented designers and just like, they're always putting out these new fresh ideas and takes and like uh, Evita, she is such a great designer. She uses her illustration skills uh, in her designs and it's like, creates these really cool hybrid graphics. And I'm just like, man, like I want to do that so badly, but I just don't have the patience or time to execute it. 
Uh, but so it's teams like that, that really like inspire me to this day still. And like the Los Angeles Lakers, like they're probably one of the most like notable like teams out there. Uh, but their brand and their design skills are through the roof because it feels very much LA, feels very editorial, but it works for them. And I'm just like, I want to figure out how they do it because I want to be able to do it. Um, and so like, it gets me pumped when I see like these, all these different types of graphics like this, because it makes me want to do my job even better. Um, and in this way, you kind of have like this internal like competition with these brand teams that don't even talk to you on a daily basis but for you you're just like no I gotta like outsmart you so when I was an intern at the Chargers the intern at the Rams at the time like he was making all this dope stuff and it was almost like we would just like compete with each other in our graphics over Twitter is be like oh no I'm gonna do this idea first before you can do it um but you all you always have that mutual respect for each other but sometimes it can be a little bit of a competition between like designs online that's so amazing. Of course, going back to the NFL draft, can you talk about what the process is like whenever players get drafted and as the graphic designer, what your job is on draft night? Yeah, so when we're doing draft, draft is something you prepare for months in advance because it is such a beast to tackle and there's so many different components to it. Um, not just from a design side, but from like a video production and organization side, like there's so many things that have to be in place and like cannot go wrong. And if like one thing goes wrong, then it screws up the entire operation. Uh, so for us for draft night, it's making those templates already pre-built ahead of time. So it's almost like, you know, when we work in live in game, like we don't know what's going to happen. Like we literally have minutes if not seconds to grab that photo and slap the name on it and drop into your template and send it off right so having those pre-built templates already ready to go saves our lives because if we were like building stuff up while this was happening it would never get done in time um, and that's why like when we're doing in-game events like we already have pre-built like score graphics out it's just kind of inputting the information and sending it out as fast as possible and then with the draft of course it's like you have to kind of predict who the team is going to pick because us as designers we still don't know no one in the organization knows until the moment that name is called on television you may get like a one minute notice to be like okay this is who they're going with and you got that one minute to make that graphic and send it out it's extremely stressful and it's a little intimidating uh, but after you work the draft like a few times then you get used to it but definitely that first draft was like sweating bullets all of us interns are like oh my god like we can't mess this up and how it went is like each of us took like a different template or different size that would be sent out to like either like instagram twitter facebook whatever it was and we'd be responsible for that uh that size dimension and sending it off at the 49ers it was just like all right you're in charge of doing the social graphics you're in charge of doing the stuff for uh the web platform you're gonna edit photos you're gonna stand by and do all the stats graphics that are to follow and that was our job. So it was a little bit more heavy intensive, but like as a unit, we worked well together to communicate. And it is just constant back and forth communication between us and the social team and us and the web team. And then like Kyle Shanahan calling down and being to our social team be like, this is who we're gonna pick. And then like, you just gotta go with it. And it's a three day marathon of doing this over and over again. Um, definitely when you have like, like they had this year was the number third pick, like that's intense. Like they had probably had like maybe like five options that they knew like the team was interested in getting. And then they probably had each template already built out with those players already ready. And then they did all the extra fun graphics later on in the day or as the night progressed. Uh, but that's how it is for like every draft. I, I can't imagine it's just for football. It's probably like that with every draft and every sports league uh, kind of operates the same way. Is that the anticipation and waiting for that player's name to be called. And like you've done all these months of like work and preparation. You're like, you just want it to go flawlessly on draft night. Um, and it does. And it usually did. And so I got to say congrats to all the teams this past draft because they did an amazing job. Definitely last year doing COVID was a little bit hectic because my internet kept like dropping and going out. And uh, that was a little bit of a struggle. But uh, this year, you know, we're moving forward. So I'm happy to see like football, you're about to get all of their fans back this year. So 
it's going to be fun. And I, now this year I get to enjoy football as a fan and, and not as an employee. So it'll be a little bit different. Can you talk about, of course, what you pre- look to prepare for whenever it comes to now working with the Seattle Krakens on draft night and preparing for their social media posts? Yeah, so right now, the goal is to kind of establish our brand and grow it as much as possible before draft night. And draft night will kind of be like that teaser opening to what our brand is going to look like on social for the rest of the year. I think right now the brand has a pretty strong look and established environment to it, but there's always going to be, you know, room to finesse it and grow it even more. And that's the part I'm excited for is to actually make a season campaign that's going to just rock people's world. Uh, I want to be on par with the Sharks and everything that they're doing. And that's like my goal and ideas for this team is just to make the coolest shit that everyone else can see, but also um, it's easy to understand. <laughs> that's a big important thing with graphics is that you can have something that's really cool, but if, you know, if a normal average person like doesn't understand what's going on with it, then you've kind of like missed your mark. And so it's going to be a, uh, a challenge but I'm super excited for it so I can't say much more than that otherwise I might get in trouble for leaking uh, team secrets. <laughs> what are some of the similarities and differences between the NHL and the NFL when it comes to graphic designing? Um, they all operate the same way so it's some teams you know have like it's like a team of like five designers and some teams only have two designers at the Kraken. The brand team only has two graphic designers. And then we have a, another designer for like our corporate partnerships who helps us out with stuff. So essentially it's kind of like three of us, right? Doing everything, which is a lot. So like when I came from the 49ers, there was four of us working at any given time. And so when you go from a team of like four or five to just two people, there's a lot of like projects that back up and a lot of time management that has to happen we kind of have to like pick or choose our battles which with what needs to be get done first and hopefully you know as a team like you know as our team grows the brand team will grow too and we can add more people to it in the future um because it'd just be really helpful and like it's always helpful when you have like a full-fledged like design team to take on multiple projects instead of just you know the two people doing it (laughs) but aside from that it's not too different. I feel like most sports leagues are kind of ran the same. Um, I The second I got to the Kraken, like our fearless leader, Todd, and he was just like, make us better. I was like, that's a really powerful saying to be like, make us better. And to know that from the gr- when they hit the ground running, they're just like, we want the Kraken to be the first team to really show that we are diverse and we want to bring diversity to hockey. And you see that with the, in their employees and people they hire and the programs that they're starting and wanting to put out. And I'm just like, you know, that's a really great feeling because when I did come into hockey, that was the one thing I was afraid of. It was like, it's not going to be as diverse as football is, but um, the Kraken, they're making it that way. So I don't know if it's like that at every hockey team, if it's as diverse as ours is, um, I guess I'll find out. But definitely, you know, having that diversity and having a, an employer who understands its you know employees and their base and like what's going on in their lives is super important um and that's something that the Kraken are doing really well just like the 49ers are really good at doing that as well um especially so it's nice because it feels like it's somewhat familiar to me what is something that you learned now that you didn't know before becoming a graphic designer on the professional sports level <laughs> Uh, sports is a 24-7, 365, so uh, there are no breaks, there's no off-season really for a sports designer, and I know a lot of people think, you know, when the season's done, like, we're kind of done, and we just hang out and do nothing, but uh, we are still working, it's, we're working constantly, and we're preparing for the next season to come up, we're waiting for draft to come up, we're doing all the other side projects that were kind of hushed and put aside during the season. So all the other departments come out of the woodwork and it's like, oh, you can do this for us finally. So it's a lot of like busy work in the off season, uh, but it's all fun. Definitely like when you're in the season, you're a little bit more pumped and excited to do graphics because it's like, oh, like our, we're going to play this team. So now I get to make a graphic centered around not just our team, but this team too, which is kind of fun. Uh, so definitely I wish someone would have told me that before it started and uh, it is truly a job that is not for 
I would say the weak minded because it is you are busy all the time. Uh, and I am busy and I've had to, you know, sacrifice holidays and birthdays and seeing friends and families just to work and get my work done and to go to games and to be able to do the demanding schedule that it, it requires of me. But it's what you sign up for when you when you join sports. And so you're working just as much as, you know, the players are working downstairs, essentially. Uh, then those are your coworkers, which is kind of weird to think of them as coworkers, but they are. They're just, you know the forefront of the team that everyone wants to watch and pay attention to. And you're kind of like the magic that does everything behind the scenes for them. Um, I will say. So I wish someone would have told me, you know, how demanding that sports was actually going to be. But for me, I'm a person that kind of thrives on stress and the demanding nature and coming from a music background and like working in entertainment before this, uh, I already knew, you know, sports is just another entertainment field. It's just about sports. It's not like a TV show or a movie or something like that. So it is constantly busy. And I always tell students, you know, like that's the one thing you have to prepare for because no one tells them that when you go into sports, you think it'll be a nine to five job and it's not uh, more than so it's more like a, an eight to like six or eight to seven, eight to eight, probably like a 12 hour day that you're working. Um, if you're not so lucky I always try to have a cutoff when I'm working so that I'm strictly doing like a nine to six role and anything that comes in after is like if it's like super pro top priority it's got to go out in the morning then I'll get on it and do it but if it can wait until the next day then I'm the one that's in control to be like hey like I know like I can get this done in the morning and my social team will back off and be like okay like yeah we trust you um, and so having that level and trust and respect for each other is super important when you're working in sports, right? Other than that, pay, I would say, fluctuates for graphic designers in sports. Uh, I feel like people that go into sports think, oh, yeah, like, I'm going to be working with this team and making all this money. But it's not the case. Uh, a lot of people in sports, you know, we get, like, the average starting income, which is not as great as it could be for some, like, other design jobs. And it's not a like a known secret that sports designers are not always paid the best for the hours that they work. Um, it's not just like a one singular league thing in the NFL, right? It's across all leagues that it's kind of that way. I'm very fortunate that I got in with a company that, you know, actually pays me the money the, the, that I feel that I deserve. And I'm super grateful for that, right? Um, but other sports teams, you know, designers, like they feel that. And that's why you see a lot of designers leaving the field now because, they just can't afford to stay in it any longer and they want to pursue other things with their talents that they know will be more beneficial for them elsewhere. So, you know, when you're starting out, just expect that the pay isn't going to be great. And if you stick in it for the long haul, it's going to get better. Uh, but also, you know, like young designers should know that when you, when you want to do with a team, make sure you're doing that research and background because every team operates differently, right? Everyone has like different morals and values. Like, the San Francisco 49ers is a completely different team from the Washington football team. You know, they're two completely different ran organizations. Uh, and so it's like when, you know, you want to work in sports, make sure that you're going to get along with those teammates and it's not going to be like a hostile work environment. Um, things in sports are changing and they're getting better. But I, for those are like the three things that I wish people would have told me when I first started out, I've been super grateful and lucky that I've been with teams who really value me as a person and like value my input and my ideas and, uh, and pay me to do that, right? And so that for me, it's a really good feeling to know that there are like really good teams out there that truly do care about their employees. And, and it's not all just about winning, even though winning at the end of the day is the goal for everyone. That's wonderful advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media and all of your wonderful designs that you've done for the Kraken? Yeah, so uh, for anyone that wants to check me out, you can find me on Twitter at C-A Sarno. So that's C-A-S-A-R-N-O underscore. Um, that is my Twitter account. It's also my Instagram account. <laughs> my Instagram account probably doesn't show much of my graphics. It's more photography in my everyday life. If you want to be a little creep and stalk me, that's fine. <laughs> I'm not saying anyone's creeper or stalkers here. Uh, but definitely like come talk to me, come be friends. You find me on LinkedIn, it's Carly Sarno. Uh, my website is carlysarno.com. You can also look at my stuff there. And so 
all you need to know is my name and I'm, I'll pretty much show up anywhere. <laughs> I, I think there's only one Carly Sarno in this world. So <laughs> super grateful for that being a rare breed. So, uh, but yeah, I'd love to get in touch with anyone. I'm always open to talking with people and sharing advice and uh, talking design, or even if it's just like playing video games, you, you wouldn't imagine that of people who just message me to play like Call of Duty and I'm so down for it. Thank you again, Carly Sonato, for your interview and best of luck in your future with the Seattle Kraken as a designer. Thank you. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Carly, for your interview and best of luck. Yeah, thank you, Brandon. It's, it's been a joy to talk to you today. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.